change the rules. From another galaxy, a firefighter. <laughs> I don't need an armor. I've got a Kroger. Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Kevin McHale. We are back after a week. I'm ready. I'm trying to say back with another video. I know you guys like, well, what the hell happened to the video? Did you post the video? Because on Thursday, I went on Instagram Live, which I love. I went on Instagram Live, and I was like, yeah, I'm waiting for Mikael. I'm like, no, we get it like 4.15, 4.15, 4.30, 4.30. I just like, hey, you know what? Let me get off it. He probably down to run his mouth. Then it got a little bit later, so I'm trying to say, oh, no, bitch, now you try. What's going on? And then Mikael, you, you had your, uh, the trip you was preparing for. Yeah. So so right. y'all went on Friday uh -huh. and y'all went to the We went to the new uh the new National uh, Museum of African American History in DC that just opened up a few months ago and it was awesome. If you have not been, please go. Excuse me. Um it's a ticketed uh it's you have to have tickets to get inside. Um and we just had a great time. It was beautiful. It was so much history in there, so much history that had been donated by, you know, um, historical figures in the African American movement. Um, it was just, it was wonderful to see. Uh, I, I would definitely encourage anyone who is probably thinking about going, go. Uh, it's definitely something that if you go in a day, you have to be there like a long time because it's a lot to see. And we are my church. We're actually going back in August. We have the second trip that we're going back in August, and we're sold out for that. Um, but uh, it was it was it was wonderful. Like it was it was great to see the costumes that Michael Jackson's family had donated. Uh, Whitney Houston's family had donated. Oprah had donated some stuff. Um, it was a dress that Rosa Parks had worn. Um, it was just all this different type of uh, memorabilia in there. Um, Chuck Berry's uh, red Cadillac. It was just all. Fucking How long is the tour? It's a museum. It's as long as you want it to be. Oh, like, you I go in there and you leave when you want to. Oh, yeah. I thought you had like a certain time. No, no, you just have to have like you have to have. They give you tickets and the tickets are time to when you can come in because it's so big and there's so many people coming in there. I guess they want it to be you know kind of like organized. But once you get in there, there's no time limit of you leaving. You can stay in there all day. Once you just you know once you get in there, but um. Yeah, it was awesome. Like it really was very, very. It was it was a great experience. And so, if you know of anyone who's given a trip, go. If you don't know anybody, you and your friends just want to get up and go one day, but you have to get tickets. You have to go on their website. You can Google, Google the museum, and they'll tell you. Can you get tickets the same day, or it's still like no, no? You have to schedule the tickets because, like I said, the museum just opened up, and it's been sold out from October all the way into like April. Like just sold out, like for especially week weekends. That's why we went on a Friday. Um, so you can't get tickets to the same day that you ordered them. You actually it has to, you know, you gotta have to schedule it. It's more you know, yeah. less people come. I have like on a Monday or Tuesday or whatever days they have available because mm -hmm. they have this thing now on their website where they have five different days and you choose from the five days that you would want to go, and the museum will get back to you letting you know which one of those five days is available. Mm -hmm. So that's how they do it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a great experience. I know you might post a lot of pictures. I didn't. I didn't post a lot. Of, actually, I didn't post that many pictures at all. It was a long day for me. It was. A, it started out very, very hectic, but it ended on a good note. Shout out to the people who came from Instagram who attended the trip. We had a couple who came all the way from Texas. What? They bought a ticket. Came on the bus. Ah, I know that's right. We have some loyal supporters. Yeah, we really do. They came all the way from Texas. They met us at the church and they came down on the bus with us in DC. They went, you know, to the museum with us. And then after the museum, uh, she and her—I don't know if it was her husband or her boyfriend—but they decided to stay in DC. So they got their stuff off the bus and then they, you know, I know that's right. But it was wonderful. Like everybody was so happy, you know, that they everybody was so happy, like, oh my god, you know. But it was nice. Like they came all the way up from Texas to be with us. And I didn't even know that they had come, that like they were from Texas until like a few days before the trip. And she hit me up and was like, you know, we're coming from Texas. And I was like, wow, that is so cool. 
this is how we shop with them better. Oh, yeah, that was very nice. nice. That was that was a very nice thing. But it was a nice trip. So overall, go if you have to. Yeah, make sure y'all go. And if you have not subscribed to the Scorpio Show, I hope that you have. Click that subscribe button. Also, make sure y'all like this video, share it to Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, or wherever you choose to share our videos. There are a lot of topics that need to be discussed, and my phone is only on 10%. But there is a show. It's, it, let me tell you something. There's so many shows coming back. So many shows are ending. I know This Is Us is ending. I can't wait to uh, binge watch that because that is a great show. I've seen three episodes. I love them. Um, you got Shades of Blue coming back with J-Lo. That came back last night. You know I don't watch that Walking Dead stuff. So I think that was coming back. Uh, the New Feud with uh, yeah, uh, Susan Sarandon and Jessica Lange. Oh, that's dumb. I didn't know what actresses it were. I honestly, I thought she was done working with, uh, who? Jessica Lang. I thought she's probably done with just American Horror Story. Uh, but Jessica Lang, that's still be working because she says she's not doing it anymore. It's like the old coffee. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't realize, it's okay, you saw it. Jessica yeah. Lang and Susan Sarandon, Susan Sarandon played Betty Davis is 70 years old. Wow. And Jessica Lange is 67. Jessica Lange looks good, but you can tell Jessica Lange had some work done. Yeah, she definitely has some work done. But I mean, and she's 67, like, they look good, you know. But Susan Sarandon is 70 years old. She's up there. I remember, I remember when I 70 like, was, like, old. <laughs> <laughs> and it looked old. But now, 70 in 2017 looks like Susan Sarandon. You got coins, you can but I don't think Susan Sarandon has had any work done. I mean, she still looks like her doctors are incredible. Yeah, they are, but I, I don't think Susan Sarandon's had work done. I think she just has good genes. If there is some yeah, good genes. Because I would hate for some white person to say that about Sister Tyson. That's good genes. Yeah, that's, that's very good genes. Yeah. Is she like 92? 92? Yeah, she's out here. Yeah. And she still got it. I mean, some people do have good genes. And I also think not only good genes, but if you just keep yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Like Jane Fonda as well. Like Jane Fonda is what eighty, and she looks like she's fucking sixty. Like, oh my gosh, she looks fucking forty. These girls are doing it. Do but it's just so many shows. It's just too many. It's too many. I can do. Last night was like, what the fuck to watch? But um, there was a show that I watched last week. Mm -hmm. It's on Spike TV, and Jay Z is one of the presenters, and it's called the Khalif Brown Story. Now, some of you may have seen or heard about. Um, could he taken his life, but this tells the story of what happened that day, and it's telling you, like, what goes on at Rikers Island, and it's, like, it's one of the more powerful presents you can be at, at Rikers Island. Yeah, Rikers Island. And, let me tell y'all, the documentary was good, this is only the first hour, because I was like, I was wondering how much they could tell. They told the backstory of what happened. I learned stuff that I didn't know. Like, I didn't know that Khalif Browder was a foster child. Um, his parents were, well, well, his mom was, the, like, the main one talking, and she had her issues and her struggles. And it was just, it was just really good. But it's just such a shame that Khalif Browder, he, did, he didn't have to die. He didn't have to be in solitary what you call it, solitary confinement for so many years and so many, like, I, they did look at his days here, like, over a thousand days, he was getting beat up by the prison guards, he was getting beat up by the prisoners, he, and this is all over a backpack that he allegedly stole, they had an iPad and some money and a camera, and he done been to court 30 times and they still kept him, his mother couldn't afford money to get him bailed. And then when they did try to get him bailed out, something had happened to where he couldn't get out. It was just so much going on. In this story, they're going to tell the story for six weeks. And I know it's, it's going to be a little bit, um, probably give, go into more details about the way the system works and, and how it needs to change. But if you missed episode one, go to Spike TV, look at Khalif Browder, or you can go to Khalif.Spike. Or Khalif.SpikeTV.com and watch it. It's really, really good. Some parts you might cry, some parts you want to get angry, but it's a story that needs to be told. And I wish it wasn't on Spike TV. I wish it was on BET because black people need to see this. But you, you really need to watch it. It's really good. They have featured Khalif's brother's story um, in Ava DuVernay's 13th um, 
um, documentary. Uh, so they had shown certain, they had shown different um, surveillance footage of him getting attacked by prisoners and things like that while he was in um, prison. It's a sad, it's a sad story. And they even had him because he had when he had got out of prison, he had did like several interviews talking about how he was treated in jail. Yeah. And I had never even even fathomed that. I think I had heard his story, but I never even connected as I was watching 13th with the story that I had heard before. And then towards the end of his little segment in 13th, when it mentioned that he had hung himself, I was like, oh. Yeah. Like, I was just, like he went in there one person yeah. and came out. Oh, no. oh my goodness, I thought it's just mentally it broke him down and it could break anybody down. So yeah, this this and he was 16 at the time, so it was hard. Uh, a story came out on Chris Brown. Uh, Chris Brown billboard article about his black his sisters, him being on drugs, him beating people, him abusing, just abusing drugs, just doing so much. This story, my first question was, why are, why are they telling this story now? Because we all, <clears throat> we all know Chris Brown's history. We see it all the time. I just wanted to know why the billboard feel like we need to um, just put this article out. Let's interview his friends and put the article out. And the article, I didn't read the article. What is that it's, it's about? It's about Chris Brown. It's about all of his, um, it's about him beating up Karuchi. They talk a little bit about him and Rihanna. Him beating up his manager, some beating up some of his friends. And this is his friends that's former people that work with Chris with Brown. Him, giving this friends, interview. Giving this interview. And discussing what's going on with Chris Brown. And this comes like right after he announces his tour and all of that stuff going on. He has gone on. We all know that Chris Brown needs help. But I'm trying to understand why is Billboard trying to profit off of this story. It kind of reminded me like how when that Whitney Houston stuff came out and the sister sold the pictures and all of that stuff on Whitney. Like we know what's going on with Chris Brown. Chris Brown has fans that will always support him. And we we people that to me people that are that know what's going on, we know what's going on with Chris Brown. But as much as you try to do for somebody, they have to want to help for themselves. No matter how many times we say, Oh, that nigga crazy, he doing this, he needs to stop. Like, why do these girls keep getting into these situations? Oh, because it's Chris Brown. And we see what he did to Rihanna. We heard about what he did to Karuchi. And you see him how he be still putting her in his songs, how he be haunting her and chasing her and everything. Why do you still want why do you think that's cute to be around somebody like that? But women, some women like that. But you know what's so funny because I you know I don't I can I don't care too much for Wendy Williams. But I saw a clip today that um Wendy, I guess she spoke about this on her show today. Mm -hmm. And I saw a clip on Instagram one of my followers had posted. And Wendy Williams was basically saying how, you know, the relationship, she feels as though the relationship that he has with his mother is kind of like a, he doesn't really respect his mom in a sense that he would even listen to her. And therefore, that's probably why he still continues to do the things that he does. Because if he had that kind of respect for his mother, especially being as though his mother was in a situation like this, you would think that he would kind of, his mom would be able to reel him in and be like, and then he would listen. And I was watching it, and I was listening to Wendy, and I said to myself, wow, this is probably one of the first times I actually 110% agree with Wendy Williams. And I, I totally got her analogy, and I totally understood what she was saying. Because I think a long time ago, you and I had a conversation about Chris Brown, and we were just talking about how people around him, including his mother, are just like enabling everything. Enabling everything. And when Wendy said it today, I was like, wow, like, Wendy, we finally connect. Like... Yeah, I feel the same way. I think that Chris Brown is to the point that he's so big and he's taking care of everybody that his mom is probably like, well, oh, I can't really say nothing that else I can, that I can do. You know what I mean? That's how I feel too. Like, you know, and therefore he doesn't really, he does what he wants to do. And it's sad because if you don't have that respect even for your mother, knowing that your mother was in a situation like that, you ain't going to have no respect for nobody else, especially not the one that you date. So his life is then spiraling out of control, and I don't know what 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 is this article going to do to help Chris Brown and start making him even more upset that people are out here talking about him and spreading the story around, which we know 
You know, I wonder what the record like. Is it, can his record label help him? Like, I, I'm like I'm wondering all of that stuff. Like, he still has a record deal. Mind you, some people get in trouble and they lose their record deal for getting in trouble, but not Chris Brown. Like, he has to fall all the way down for him to pick himself up. Like, even though people try to help him, like you know, like if you fall down a cliff and you hit certain stuff and you still continue to fall, like he has to hit rock right bottom. He hasn't hit rock bottom. You know, yeah. every honest situation wasn't a rock bottom. It was just a. Uh, it was one of those things where you're falling down a cliff and you hit something that temporarily stops you from falling. Mm-hmm. But then all of a sudden, you mm-hmm. begin mm-hmm. to fall mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. That's what that was. That Rihanna thing. I think we all thought that Rihanna thing <coughs> was he gets it. But he got it for like a, a couple of months or maybe a year and then he went back to yeah. He's kind of like the Bobby Brown of the our generation. Yeah. yeah. Just like how we seen in the new edition movie, how Bobby Brown was off the chain. Mm-hmm. Off the chain. <laughs> and I wouldn't put the drug thing past him either, so. Yeah. And um, this is not uh, big, but um, Lady Gaga will be replacing Beyonce at Coachella. But I want to know, if you bought tickets to Coachella, do you still ask for a refund? Can you get a refund? I've never been, so I don't know. <laughs> if you're not a Lady Gaga fan, and you bought tickets to see Beyonce, do you keep it? I will say this. Can I say this? Uh, I, okay, I understand people plus people's frustration that okay, Beyonce's not going to be there, and so therefore you want a refund. But I was telling Diggy the other day. I said, you know what, Diggy? To be quite honest with you, everybody knows who watches who watch this show for multiple for a long period of time. I wasn't a Lady Gaga fan, and I went to go see her, and I was like, wow. So what I would say as a Beyonce fan, I would really hope and suggest that for those of you that have tickets to Coachella and you want a refund. Don't get a refund. Because I feel like this type of festival, uh, this type of setting for Lady Gaga is perfect for her. And there were some people who were saying that they didn't think that she would do a good job simply because of basing it off of the Super Bowl performance. And I was, I was like, you can't base that Super Bowl performance off of, you know, past stuff. Because I feel like Lady Gaga is an excellent performer. We've seen her multiple times in concert. I think she's an excellent live performer. And I would say give her a chance. Go see her. Have a good time. Don't get your money back. Continue to go. You never know who you might run into while you're there at Coach. That's what I would say. That's true. It's like you never know. And then you may have a newfound respect for her. Like I did. I was just like, wow. Like she really did put on a goddamn show. And she said, and she said, and that's what I like, right? And that's what I like. And she sang live, and she put on a great show, and it was just like I had nothing to complain about. I was like, wow, Lady Gaga did the damn thing. I had a newfound respect for her as a live performer because everybody knows I love when an artist can perform live, not just perform on a CD, but perform live. And she did it. So don't base the Super Bowl performance, which I still haven't seen, off of her entire. Past stuff that she's done in the past. Like, yeah, I want to know if they can dive and then um, dive off. So, first of all, sing on top right. of the stadium, then dive down and then perform and do acrobatics mm. and all of that shit. And mm. so, yeah, that's, that's boring. I don't think her performance is boring at all. That was Lady Gaga. I mean, I, don't, I haven't seen the performance, but I will say I, this is probably one of the least talked about performances. Yeah, you know, because you didn't. I mean, it, it talked about what for a day? Lady Gaga. <laughs> but no. Because Lady Gaga in the past was talked about for weeks. But Lady Gaga is not on that same train like Lady Gaga was when she first came out. Uh, and this has been my strategy. Ever since Born This Way, just came out six years ago. Ever since Born This Way, her train has like. Okay, we, want her to, we want her to speed it up again. I've been saying that, but her tickets are fucking selling out. Right. And extra day. Right. So I'm surprised. Man, I was, no, I was nervous. Like these damn studios, I mean. Studio stadiums, like I got you going stadiums and they're selling them out. Stadiums are the new arenas now. They are. They're yes. the new arenas, and I feel like, oh my god, I can't. Oh my god, I just got. I got a flat. Oh, you had to bring that. Oh, you had to bring that. They're not even. The baby's not even here yet, and I'm ready for the next tour, not the next album. Yeah. The next tour. <laughs> <laughs> the next tour. The next tour. The next tour. <laughs> so I just got a flashback. <laughs> Wow, that was great. I enjoyed it too. She had one in the rain. And didn't get a cold. <laughs> <laughs> um, Grace Jones, I was just talking about her last week. Oh, two weeks ago. Oh. And I was feeling sorry for her. Now she didn't change her name. And I heard, I didn't get a chance to see the story. But she was just saying that she's more dis- disappointed with black people because she's done a lot. 
himself though. So I'm gonna just leave that right there for y'all. Y'all do what y'all want. Uh, Tyrese got married. I'm going over last week because I had a lot of notes. Tyrese got married to a beautiful woman who is a working woman, and a lot of people took offense to Tyrese um, post because they thought that she was a white woman, and it was like, why would you say black queen? And he's like, oh, he do all of this talk about pro black this and pro black that, and he's with a white woman, and she's not white. And I want people to know that Ecuadorian and Jamaican. Those are not races. Those are nationalities, meaning this is where this person is from on their, you know, their background. That's not a race. So she's a black woman. And um, people just had a lot, whole lot of stuff to say. And I'm, it's kind of like I'm getting sick and tired of every time a black man marries someone that's light-skinned or white, everybody is upset. Love does not have a color. People can love and marry and fuck and do whatever or whoever they want to. How is it affecting you to the point where you got to go to their Instagram, go to their Twitter, and talk all this nasty stuff about them? This is somebody who they love and that hopefully that person loves them back. And you should be happy for them, not worrying about a skin color. We have to get past this. You have to get past skin. You know what's so funny? Because as you're sitting here saying this, it made me think about... Uh, one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Well, my favorite TV show of all time, I Love Lucy. And I told this story before. If any of y'all are familiar with the show, I Love Lucy. Um, Lucy Ball was married to um, uh, when they were starting to create the show, I Love Lucy. They were trying to find a, a, a actor to play Lucy's husband on the show. You know, who could sing, and it was a band leader. This, that, the third, because that was what the character um, entailed. Um, and Lucy said, "Well, you know," she told the producers, "Well." Why can't we just get Desi, my husband, to play the part of Ricky? And the producers told her, well, you know, nobody's not going to believe that you, this white woman, is married to this Cuban man. They're just not going to believe it. It's not going to work. And we're not going to be successful with the show. And she said, but I am married to him. Like, he's really my real husband. Like, and it worked. It was one of the biggest TV shows of all time. Okay? Not only was it one of the biggest TV shows of all time, it was the first television show in the history of TV to show a woman pregnant on TV. And I was trying to figure out because it's been disputed if Ricky and Des and Ricky and Lucy were the first interracial couple because a lot of people or was it Tom and Helen Willis or the Jacksons? Yeah. But because he was Cuban and she was white. I would say that's interracial because that's two different races. One right. white, one is Latin. So. Right. Because and, and a lot of people had said they had considered Tom and Helen, but then a lot of people were like, well, what about Lucy and Ricky? Because he was Cuban. He was but you know what? Cuban born, too. Some is I don't even want to go that deep. But <laughs> some Latino people they live their money. And they just live their life. And many consider them as being yeah, they probably uh, their money. Cool. That's the argument. No, no. People back then did not look at them as white. No, no, no. If they looked oh, at them as being know. white, yeah, if they looked at them as being white, he would have, they wouldn't have had a hard time trying to and he had a thick fucking Cuban accent because he was Cuban born. He was born down here. <laughs> but now you can go there because Obama made that possible. Yes. After 57 years. <laughs> so yeah, leave Tyrese alone. Tyrese, I'm just happy you fell in love with somebody. And I haven't seen like any dumb crazy posts from Tyrese because y'all know Tyrese can go overboard on social media. I'm just happy for him. He was on Wendy Williams before he got married, just talking about him being on the show star, which is good. And just his love life and how she asked like, Do you want to marry? The person you ain't say, Yes, I do. And they got married on Valentine's Day. And once that picture came out, people just try to find all kinds of mad things to say about her. But that woman has jobs, she's making six figures, she doesn't need to have this money. So she's not no, you know, like the, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a great way to say it, son of a guy. So, you know, she's doing her thing, so congratulations to Tommy Tim's new way. Uh, the escape news. Everybody was talking about this on Thursday. In what movie? The Escape Reunion. Oh, with Tiny, Tamika, Tamika, and Help me out. Candy. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard because, you know, or, uh, or to be kind of tiny, whatever. Anyway, because they go to me, but they both the same person. Yes. No, no, no. 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 
<laughs> no, I'm saying Tom Patty's name is Tamika, right? Yeah, Tamika, yeah. but I think they spell them different ways. Yeah. <laughs> But Tiny and Candy is the most popular one. And yeah. Tasha got her, she got her little solo thing going on, but the other Timmy got her. There's a lot of noise coming this way. Open that door. That's Johnny. That's my dad. That's Johnny's room. That's Johnny's room. That's right there. Who that behind you? I don't know. Not today. Not today. Not today. Not today. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Happy birthday to my nephew. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And the last time you came here, you came here. Hey. Everybody say happy birthday to Jeremy. It's 27 today. Happy birthday. But what you talking about? This yeah. thing how I came here today. Talk about your well, issues. But when the last time I came here, though. That's the last time, and I remember. And I forgot. You lost weight. You lost weight. You lost weight. You lost You lost weight. 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 You lost You lost weight. You lost You lost weight. 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 Um, I don't know if I'll be able What's happening tonight? Did you know? Uh, uh, yeah, I thought y'all knew. I, I did not get it. I actually chance. got the, you said the last night, right? Yeah, I got the message so this morning. Night. Yeah, I got it this morning when I was at work, and I told you that you got nothing to do. I have to edit, uh, and I have to not drink. Mm-hmm. I'm standing with alcohol. Mm-hmm. So much for me. Can I borrow your speaker? You can actually probably have that speaker. Because I don't need it. <laughs> but y'all gotta wait till we finish recording. We about to leave though. Wait, we are about to get back. Back up, see what's going on. Get ready. Get ready. I'm like, I'll get it. I'll get it. Stay over here. Yeah, but we get attitude though. Because I'm recording and y'all coming up in my face. Don't get on camera with your hair looking like that. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, <laughs> you wish he ain't here. No, I'm not. That's my girlfriend. I don't want to hear her talking shit like that. He ain't like hear you talking shit. If you want to edit it out, no, fuck, I don't have to do it. Oh. This makes the show go when people come in talking shit like this. The whole thing. Kevin, this a new, that's a new Xbox. You, you think all of you that's not coming? Yeah, because my Xbox dies and I had to get a new one. But what do you mean it dies? It's time to get a show today. Shit, stop. Um, we were talking about, what was we talking about? We were just about to talk about the escape room. Are y'all here for that? Plan B? Are y'all here for it? Yeah. No, I'm here for it. I said I think that people should be here for it. Because Lady Gaga, she puts on good shows. She's all right. Tell her. Yeah. I mean, I would rather, if, if somebody's going to replace Beyonce, let it be Lady Gaga. I mean, I would rather be the number one choice to not the option, but what the fuck? Well, I mean, she just got pregnant. Okay, take when it. she knew she was performing. She's a queen. She don't give a fuck. She don't you remember one of them things is broke. No. Yeah, the, um, one of the AV cords is broke. So then only like, you got to plug in one of only one. Do it work? It work. I mean, it's loud as hell. And, 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 you, and if you want to listen to the radio, you have to buy uh, an antenna for it. Can't come with all of them. Well, that shit is, I had got that, that five years ago. You got to explain yourself to This is five years old? Yes. But thanks, you guys. And it was $300. Thank you. So you get it for a discount. Free. Feel free to bring some of oh, oh. yes. Of your choice. Okay. Whatever I bring, I'm taking this phone with me to my my I'm wearing a bottle, even out of there. Don't let you wear it. Don't go. That's the thing. I'm still going. I can get you. You ain't doing what you want. You're not gonna go to this party. Take a bottle and then bring it back. We don't do that. Guess what? That's hard. I need to get a bottle of my choice, and I'm going to drink it. Well, bring it home. Wait, wait. Because you're not gonna drink it. That's how it's gonna take it back home. with you. Yeah, that's how it's gonna take it back home. Yeah, that's how it's gonna take it back home. Yeah, that's how it's gonna take it back home. Yeah, that's how it's gonna take it back home. Yeah, that's how it's gonna take it back home. Yeah, that's how it's gonna take it back home. Yeah, that's
So yeah, make sure your massages first. Still don't catch them. But yeah, I'm just tired. I'm, we we are all tired. Of trying, and, Mikhail, what did you think of the new trail? She said that. And I didn't hear. I didn't, hear, I didn't hear everything with this new travel ban. When I go home tonight, I'll be watching the, my new shows, and then I'll be you know, watching Anderson. I was telling my sister, like, Anderson Cooper, he is good, right? Like, he's actually an excellent journey. I was about to say, he's good. He is too serious for me. Like, no. But he don't, no. Hell, no. No, 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 kind of no, 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 no. I like Anderson Cooper because Anderson Cooper gets the girls together. I like a serious bitch. Like, when, when you're dealing with people like Donald Trump and them, you can't be jokey jokey. You gotta get them. Anderson Cooper got, what's her name? Kellyanne Conway yes, together for a half minute. fucking hour on this show. That was supposed to be like a 10 minute segment. And it went on for damn near 40 fucking minutes. Because those people, so producers were telling him, keep fucking going, keep going with this bitch because you're getting her. You know what I mean? That's a real fucking journalist to me. I love Anderson Cooper. I really do. I love him. And he has this great documentary that um, he did with his mom last year called um, They Got a Book Out or She Has a Book. It's a doc- yeah, yeah, but I can't think of what the documentary is. But this is what Gloria and me. Gloria and me. It's an excellent documentary. You know I'm into documentaries. It's an excellent documentary. I would advise everybody to watch it. Um, yeah, cause I, I, I love Anderson Cooper. See, so you watch like, like Rachel Maddow. Yeah, but yeah. Rachel Maddow is good. Yeah, she's good. Rachel will tie some shit up. She opens up her shit for probably some five, six, seven years ago. Tell you this story, like get you into the story. The documentary's called Nothing Left Unsaid, and then she ties it into whoever she wants to make her point about. Um in today's news. Like, she'll pinpoint something, she'll give you the backstory, you keep looking at that. Oh, I was trying to see what that said. this. Jeff Sessions defends confirmation hearing testimony saying his answer on whether anyone affiliated with Trump's team had contact with Russia during the campaign was correct. Is but you did have he's a fucking liar. Okay. you did have contact with the Russian team and now you're trying to say, oh, but senators have contact with Russian ambassadors all the time. That may be so, and nobody, no one's disputing that. We're disputing the fact that when you were asked about it, you said that you did, and then you actually volunteered and said, and actually volunteered a lot, which is a lot of fucking people out in this world. Volunteering liars and shit. I got a lot of them at my job. They're voluntary liars. Mm-hmm. They just volunteer. Go overboard. Just go overboard with, with a lot. To the point that you're like, all right, let me get up and walk away because now I'm getting mad. Because then you're taking me for a fool. Yes, but get into Rachel Maddow at 9 o'clock Monday through Friday. She's excellent. She ties old shit in with the new shit, and she's just been doing it and getting Trump out of here with all his pits and everything. Like, she's excellent. Or you can catch Anderson Cooper at 8 p.m. on CNN, and I love his keeping him honest segment. Let's keep him the fuck honest. Yeah. And they do a lot of fan check. And also, what I love about Anderson Cooper is that he's not one sided. He gets the Democrats together and he gets the Republicans together. But it just so happens he's been getting the right now. The Democrats right now, they know they got their own shit, but they being real hush hush. And they should. They, in the next year, okay. those midterm elections, somebody posted this and this is so true. Republicans, this whole impeach Trump shit, stop saying impeach Trump right now. Because it's not going to happen, especially not in 2017. Let's wait until after the midterms next year when we take, hopefully, and y'all get the fuck out there and vote. We can take back over the House and the Senate, and then we can have some Democrats on the on board with us, and then we'll have the votes that we need to fucking impeach Trump. Because I've been looking, looking up impeach. That's why you also need to check out that um, documentary on CNN, the 70s. Because Richard Nixon did a smart thing. He resigned right before they got enough votes to vote to impeach his ass. He knew he was wrong. He knew he was wrong. Mm-hmm. He knew he was wrong. Mm-hmm. He knew he was wrong. And, um... Uh, can I tell you how I'm doing with Brown's Wars and Lady is? They now? Yeah, it's good. They can't get receipts, but she put out the receipts with her and proportion from 2014 with her college, right? Bitch, I always say never delete, not delete a receipt. And the date said August 2014. This guy did it. He said, You got messages from, she told my friend, You got messages from 2000. Even though he said, Why do you have messages from 2014? I said, Bitch, I got messages from 2014 too. I went to my phone. Because you never know when a bitch might try you. Okay. And all that can have your receipts. And can't even fucking do that. Bitch, they gave everybody to take a copy of the receipts. <laughs> and it's kind of her boyfriend tied. I know he had to be feeling some kind of way. Like, Portia, like, bitch, what? Like, and then Portia, she's just, 
Like she's like, you lying, you lying. Of course she denied it. Of course she denied it. Like they don't get the receipts. And that's it for me. And then this goes on because it's something right there. She said, I want to punch it up fucking me. So it should be contained. That's how you do so, it. That's how you keep. That's why you keep receipts. Keep them. Stop deleting messages. I tell motherfuckers all the time. Don't delete messages and screenshot everything. This girl, my coworker, her baby father's friends be all up in her DMs with the her eyes. Every time she posts a nice picture, they be all up in her DMs. She went to go show me a DM today that one of them friends posted. He, it showed up and then it disappeared, meaning he deleted it. She said, "Oh, I, I said, why you ain't screenshot? Yeah, right. See how many screenshots I got on my phone? Two Let me show you right now. <laughs> I have in my phone as of today three thousand two hundred and ninety-five screenshots. Yeah, Bitch, don't you don't play. No, you did. Don't play with me. Because I go through and delete the person. Why would I have any screenshots? I might do. But why would I have any screenshots? Drop this thing. 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 Drop because my receipts come with attached receipts, okay? They do. They do. So if a bitch ever try me, don't try me. Because I'm not that I'm not that type. Mm-hmm. I won't do that. I've never done that. I've never published receipts. I've never did anything, nobody like that. But if you ever get me to the point that I need to do it, especially on social media, I on know. social media. I've never done that. So so those of you out there like, oh my god, I've never done it. But if you get me there, I will. And you'll hate me for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Three thousand. Three thousand. I'm, I'm three thousand. Who is that? Where? Don't worry about that. that is. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? Where? Right here. No. Okay. Three thousand two hundred ninety-five screenshots. Yeah. Three thousand two hundred ninety-five. Don't do that. <laughs> Show me from the front. No, I can't show you from the front because I ain't got nothing from the front. I don't know what it is from the front. Over there. <laughs> and you're trying it. Don't you try my friends. <laughs> the bestest page. <laughs> Bitch, shut up! Ow! <laughs> That's subject! I'm like, how you going? Yes, go ahead no more. That's subject. <laughs> That's subject. What? Ain't no more stuff since I don't think. You, oh yeah, you yeah. want to talk about the, uh, no she don't. With the, the who, man? Yes, Larry Davis and John Parker. Oh yeah, yeah. so the new show, you just came on, it premiered last night on FX. Um, it's a great, I, I like the first episode. I really yeah, did. It's all very shady. Very shady. Shady. Very shady. Old Hollywood shade. Um, it, it, I, I would advise everybody to check it out. I guess I didn't know it was going to be, I actually didn't know it was going to be a series, a TV series. I thought it was going to be just yeah. one, like a movie. Yeah. But uh, what, what, when it comes on Sundays? Sundays at 10. 10, 10 on yeah. FX. So the first episode uh, premiered last night, so if you didn't get to see it, make sure you check it out. Um, it's a very good show. It tells the story of uh, the legendary actresses, uh, Betty Gates and Joan Crawford, and how they were, at one time, Hollywood's biggest stars, uh, both of them Oscar winners. Um, but then as they got older, up in age, you know, they started losing their parts to younger actresses. And then, you know, they had to try to find a way to keep the money coming because, you know, it's, the money started slowing up. Um, and so they, you know, decided to get together and make this movie um, that kind of for, revived their careers or whatever the case may be. But in the uh, midst of them making this movie, like, they really, in real life, did not like each other. They didn't like each other at all. So to get two of the biggest stars in Hollywood who don't like each other to work together, and not only work together, but then play these two roles where one of them has to be mean to the other one. It's like, <laughs> I'm like, wow! But they put up a good front for the cameras and all that, but behind the scenes, people who knew them knew that they couldn't like, they didn't stand each other. And I remember there was this, um, I was watching this documentary of Betty Davis and a close friend of hers was saying that when Joan Crawford had died, Betty Davis said that my mother always told me to speak good of the dead. Joan Crawford is dead. Good. So, that's just the kind of shade that they threw at each other. Like, I really didn't like this bitch. Yeah. And the thing about it is, the film, Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, if you guys were watching it, Betty Davis, and I told y'all a long time ago to check this movie out. This movie. Mm-hmm. It was on Netflix at one point, I think. Um, Betty Davis was actually nominated for an Oscar 
for that film, for Best Actress. Joan Crawford, she wasn't nominated, but what Joan Crawford did, because he despised each other so much, that Joan Crawford, she got in contact with all the other women who were nominated for Oscar that year, along with Betty Davis for Best Actress, and said that if you win and you can't come to the show, I will accept your award when you're mm -hmm. And because of who she was, they all said, of course you can if I don't show up. And Anne Bancroft won that year, and she didn't show up, and who accepted her award? Joan Crawford. <laughs> and Betty Davis always felt like Joan Crawford had did some sneaky shit by trying to get people to vote against her from winning. Mm -hmm. yeah, so she probably did. She probably did. But, so on that note, Thank y'all for watching. It's a lot of good TV. Do y'all need to watch? What's going on? Yeah, right. Thank you. So we're going to go. We will see y'all again this week. Get together. Don't fucking go for me. Yeah, she's not coming back. You better go away. Go to the crowd.